So in the previous episodes, we talked about how to create a database and how to insert and manipulate data inside a database. Now in this episode, we're going to learn how to actually access our database directly from our websites. So as you guys can see in front of me here, I have a very basic index.php file. There's really, this is like the bare bones of an index file. And what I want to show you guys is how to actually connect to the database. And then in the next episode, we're going to talk about how to actually select data and how to insert data and how to manipulate the database directly from our website. So the first thing we need to do here is we're going to create a new file because we want to have the connection in a separate file so we can refer to it later on inside our code. So inside my new document here, I'm going to go ahead and create the PHP tags. So we have a opening tag. Now I get asked quite often because usually when I have a pure PHP file like this one, I don't put in the closing tags. And that's because since we only have PHP code inside this file, it's just a common habit of programmers to just leave out the closing tag since the only thing this one does is to close off the PHP code and then allow for us to write other code afterwards. Now, since this is a pure PHP file, I'm just going to leave this one out. So inside the code here, I'm going to go ahead and first of all, include four parameters we need in order to connect to the database, which is going to be the server name, the username, the password, and the database name for our database. So the first one here is going to be a variable that says DB server name, like so, and it's going to be equal to the actual server name of our database. Now I'm going to save this just so we can get the colors that we want inside the code. So I'm going to save it inside my root folder inside a folder called includes. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click first, create a new folder, call this one includes. Now the reason I'm doing this is because inside my main directory of my root folder, I have my index file, which is an actual page inside my website. Now, just to make this a little bit neat, and this is not something you have to do, it's just a common habit that I like to do inside my websites, is that I like to create a folder called something like includes or additional files or something that has all the code inside of it that is not seen directly inside the website, but has scripts that runs in the background of the website. So inside my includes folder, I'm going to save this file as dbh, which stands for database handler dot ink dot php and now again i have people asking me why do i include dot ink inside the file name now this is just naming okay this is just for naming purposes this does absolutely nothing technically so if we were to delete the ink you could just do like dbh.php if you want to it does the exact same thing we could also go ahead and write dash ink if you wanted to. You can do all sorts of things with the naming. I just decided that dot ink sounds better. So I'm going to say dbh.ink.php. I'm going to save it. And now we can actually get the colors that we want inside the code. So after we have the two double quotes, I'm going to write a semicolon. And inside the double quotes, we're going to write the name of our server. Now, because right now I'm using a local host server, which is using XAMPP. If you're using an online server, you need to change the name, but because I'm using a local server, I need to write localhost. So if you guys are following the exact, you know, same XAMPP program that we used to actually get the, the server running, then you also need to write localhost. Now the next name is going to be the database username. So I'm going to say DB. Well, first of all, we need to create a variable called DB username. And this one, if you're using XAMPP, is going to be equal to root, R-O-O-T. Now, this should only be changed if you are on an online server, because you will have a different username for your database. This should also be changed if you, by yourself, actually change the username and the password inside your localhost database. So as a default, XAMPP is going to be root. Inside the next variable, which is going to be variable db password, I'm going to set a password equal to nothing. Now that it again is a default inside XAMPP that when you install it as a default, it's going to have no password. If you created a password inside XAMPP when you installed it, then you need to change it. If you are using an online server, you also need to change the password inside uh, the actual code we're writing here. So you need to include the proper password for your online database. 
Inside the next line, we're going to include the database name. So I'm going to say we have a variable called db name, which is equal to double quotes, semicolon. And inside the double quotes, I'm going to write the name of our database. Now, in my case here, I decided to create a database called login system because in a couple of episodes from now, we will be talking about how to create a login system from scratch using PHP code. So I'm going to call my database login system. And again, you can call whatever you want. It, does, it depends on what you created inside your database inside PHP MyAdmin, okay? Now that we have the four parameters we need to actually get the database connection running, I'm going to include a variable called con, which stands for connection. It's going to be equal to a PHP function called mysqli underscore connect, parentheses, semicolon. And inside the parentheses, we need four parameters. And guess what? We just included those four parameters up here, so we can just put them inside the parentheses. I'm just going to paste in, first of all, the server name, the username, the password, and the database name. Now, the reason we decided to write the variables in this order up here is because that's the order that you need to include them inside your connect parentheses down here. So you need to have the, the server name first, then the username, then the password, and then the database name. Okay. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and create the actual connection to this file inside, for example, our index file. Now, typically we would actually include the connection inside uh, some kind of PHP script that needs to access the database to, for example, insert or pull out data from the database. But just to show you guys how to actually get, um, you know, this access to the database using this file, I'm going to use the index file. So let's say I have some PHP code inside my body tag down here where we need to select data from the database. What I'm going to do is I'm going to include the database connection at the very top. So I'm going to say we open up the PHP tags. And then I'm going to write include underscore once. Single quotes, semicolon. And then I'm just going to go ahead and include the path to this file. So I'm going to say it's inside a includes folder because that's the way I decided to do it forward slash. And then I'm going to say dbh dot ink dot PHP. So now we have access to the, uh, the variable up here called variable con, which is the connection to our database. So if I were to actually uh, connect to the database inside my PHP code in the later episodes, you know, a couple episodes from now, when I show you guys how to pull out or insert data directly from the website, if you want to access the database, we just need to refer to variable con inside our code. So that's the way we actually connect to the database. And this file here is everything we need to actually do that. So hope you guys enjoyed. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to actually show data from a database directly from our website. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.